What does a 22 caliber gun do to the human head? Today, with the help of Grand Thumb and his ballistics jail army, we're gonna find out. <laughs> Ever wonder what an active duty military guy who enjoys firearms, fitness, and humor does in his spare time? We don't need to look any further than Mike Jones' YouTube channel, Grand Thumb, to find out. In several of his videos, Jones demonstrates the potential damage inflicted by various firearms on the human body. I've compiled clips from his videos entitled 22 versus human head for us to watch together in the name of modern medical science. Go science. Are you ready interns? So we have ballistic dummy labs with a skull analog filled with blood, brains, and all that kind of stuff. So these types of ballistic dummies are pretty cool. And I've even considered getting them for videos right here on my channel. Do it. Do it. Maybe I might do that soon. Shout out to Ballistic Dummy Lab for helping to illustrate the effects of different injurious mechanisms on the human body. It should function very much so like a human head. Now, obviously, we know that getting shot in the head is bad. Like, really. Captain Obvious. Generally speaking, you have a high-speed energetic projectile that concentrates all of its energy of impact into a very small area, leading to a structural failure of the cranium and catastrophic damage to its contents. But bad is a catch-all term that belies the multiplicity of possible interactions that a bullet might have when it makes contact with a human head. Can the 22 kill? Well, shit, we're gonna find out, aren't we? You know what you'll do with that gun, Doc. And interns. Regardless of the answer, I don't recommend getting shot in the head. Now, Garant, can you tell us why you've chosen the 22 caliber cartridge today? Well, 22 is one of the most popular calibers in America, probably in the world. Probably more rounds of 22 have been shot than any other round combined. Which is interesting because, as Mr. Thumb goes on to say, the 22 is not a particularly large cartridge, doesn't travel especially fast, and is not prone to breaking up or expanding inside the body. When it enters the body uh, combined with not a lot of speed, it doesn't really have a tendency to break apart or expand that much. But does that mean that a hot metal bullet could be bouncing around potentially inside of my skull? Why did it not exit? I'll pass. The potential damage is all about the energy contained in the projectile. This in turn is determined by the ballistic load that has been used to mobilize the projectile. The 22 is a rimfire cartridge that has a relatively small load, approximately 29 grains or 1.9 gram bullet and five grains or 0.32 grams of black powder. It has a muzzle velocity of 1,038 feet per second or 316 meters per second and an energy of 67 foot pounds or 91 joules. Since it can take only 15 joules to break a human bone, you can see that a bullet can fairly easily penetrate the skull. However, once inside the skull, it is the inertia that keeps the bullet moving. Since the mass of the projectile is quite small, the projectile decelerates rapidly within the skull, leaving it with enough momentum to keep moving for a time, but not enough to perforate the skull a second time to allow its exit. Oftentimes, the bullet may ricochet several times within the skull, damaging the brain further with each transit across the skull. Not to mention the damage from the pressure wave that spreads out behind the bullet as it moves through the brain matter or the heat given off by the bullet, both of which are relatively destructive and harmful for the jello that is your brain. Eventually, the bullet will lose enough energy that it can no longer overcome the resistance of the brain matter, at which point it will stop inside of the skull. Dude, clearly the 22 is stopped inside the brain. And that is not good. So at an approximate distance of seven to 10 feet, these weapons are fairly effective. Grant, what do you think would happen with the little distance between you and your target? Test number two, handgun at 25 feet. Okay, we're gonna try this at 25. Okay, there it is. I mean, that's certainly penetrating within. Is that survivable? <laughs> well. Let me help you answer that. So at 25 feet away, the penetration is not exactly clean. But if we take a close look at the ballistics gel dummy, we can see that there has been some fragmentation of the projectile that causes secondary damage. Not only do you have the damage from the projectile itself occurring, but so too do you have damage from the projectile fragments that have become separated from the main projectile as it travels through the skull. Now, I'm not a ballistics expert, so I'm not entirely sure why this has occurred here. But with the increased distance between Jones and the ballistics gel dummy, the velocity 
velocity of the bullet at the moment of impact was slightly less than it would have been at a closer distance. Less velocity means less impact energy, which also means a longer transit time through the skull and more opportunity for the bullet to be deformed by the bone around it. If you know why this occurs, then let me know in the comment section below. Does the resultant injury pattern change depending on the type of weapon used? Well, what about a rifle? Test number three, rifle at 25 feet. Okay, we're gonna try with the rifle. Okay, so there's the entrance right there. Damn. That doesn't make any, hold on, that doesn't make any sense. Science is dead. Although there are a myriad of factors that play a role in determining muzzle velocity, with the same cartridge fired from a pistol subsequently fired from a rifle, the muzzle velocity from the rifle will be higher than that from the pistol. You may gain an extra 20 to 60 feet per second of muzzle velocity for each additional inch in muzzle length. So, although the distance is farther than the initial distance with the pistol, the muzzle velocity is considerably higher. More velocity means more impact energy, and at least in my mind, less transit time across the skull, as more distance is traversed in less time. Since the velocity of entry is considerably higher, there is significant potential for there to be sufficient velocity remaining when the bullet strikes the back of the skull that it still retains enough energy to perforate the skull a second time, creating an exit wound. Of course, with the increased velocity of the projectile, there is an expanded pressure wave trailing behind it, which once inside the skull will wreak tremendous damage on the enclosed brain tissue. The projectile is definitely a problem, but the pressure wave is worse because it expands the zone of injury considerably outward from the path of the projectile. Since the brain is only electrified jello, the pressure wave can propagate through the tissue quite readily. So give me something with an obvious exit wound. Test number four, rifle at 25 feet. Oh, there we go. That was good. 22, it's doing good. It's uh, it's killing. But the question is, what, what about, about point blank? blank? Test number five. Point blank. What will a 22 Beretta do to the temple? That is an excellent question, Garen, and we are all dying to find out. In the Matrix, Trinity shot Agent Smith in the head with a, I believe it was a 380 caliber Beretta. Did you guys catch that? Did you catch that? Garen points out that in Matrix, Trinity shot Agent Smith at point blank with a 38 caliber Beretta right in his temple. Because the temple is a thinner, part of the skull. He is correct at mentioning the temple as a weaker part of the skull. Dodge this. Things aren't looking good for our last ballistics dummy. It still didn't exit though. What's the thought process? The muzzle velocity of the projectile is the highest the moment that the bullet leaves the chamber. After that, it is only slowing down. So if you want to inflict the most damage, you will place the target at point blank range or immediately next to the muzzle. We can see that with the ballistics gel dummy, whose brains were literally vomited out of the entry wound in the side of the skull. Of course, at this distance, you also have to contend with the muzzle blast or the gas expelled from the muzzle of the barrel behind the projectile as well. With the muzzle directly against the skull, there is nowhere for all of that gas to go, but into the skin and into the skull through the entry wound created by the bullet. Think of an overexpanded tire. Medical diagnosis, deadly. Extremely so. On behalf of myself and the intern army, I'd like to extend a warm thank you to Garen Thumb for joining us today as a guest educator. If you guys would like to see him back for another lesson, then let me know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching and subscribing. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris after Everyday Ortho.